Hello, I hope you like my hair. It's like a I just woke up special. So today, uh, today's a crap day. It's Mother's Day, which I'm sure you can imagine isn't the best day for me. But I just kind of wanted to go business as usual and and someone's trying to text me. Oh, where's my stepsister? What do you want, you little worm? She literally just sent me a message then, like a picture of, we always send pictures like this. And she said, love you, hope you slap Pepe's ass all day like the cat mum you are. What was I saying? Um, basically, today is a bit of a crappy day, but I'm not letting it be a crappy day. I'm gonna make myself glam as hell and just do my everyday makeup look, uh, which a lot of things have changed recently. Well, I say a lot of things, not a lot of things, let's be real here. I still do the same kind of smoky eye and stuff, but I've changed some products, changed some techniques, and I'm just liking how I do my makeup at the moment. So yeah, today you have the wonderful opportunity to hang out with me while I'm a little bit weird, a little bit grumpy, and I just wanna look good. So yeah, if you wanna hang out with me, Help me distract myself a little bit and just chat makeup and just watch me put stuff all over my face, then let's go. Nice. Like I'm just like, because I'm squishing myself, I'm just like pushing my boobs up. Okay, no one needs to see that. Okay, so yeah, I have changed around a few things. Nothing major, but like I feel like my makeup's looking a little bit different and I feel like I'm wearing a little bit less coverage than normal. You heard me right. Okay, so normally I use this very, very expensive moisturizer that I didn't use for a long time because I was scared to use it and then one day I was like, you know what, I'm gonna use my bougie ass moisturizer. This is the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream. I hate it because I love it so much. I don't necessarily use it as like a makeup base, but I use it pretty much every single day, every single night. And it's just like, I mean, it does what it says in the tin. It keeps your face so, so dewy and basically just a little bit moist. Trigger warning there for that word. But yeah, I find that when I put pretty much any foundation on top of quite an intense moisturizer, it just works really well for my skin. <gasps> I was about to carry on with the video and then I realized that I haven't actually put on a headband. I simply must. Okay, now I look better. I'm like desperate housewives on crack. So next I like to go in with this guy here, one of the cheapest foundations that I probably own to be honest. But one of my favorites, it's the Body Collection one. I have this one in the shade Accru, which is like one of the lighter colors. It is still a little bit too dark for me and I am actually running quite low, so I need to go and pick up another one soon. But yeah, this stuff, I tried it out in a, it was actually a sponsored video and I'm sure a lot of people were probably like, oh, you know, is that foundation actually good or is she just kind of saying it? And I, I've used it over everything. I, ha I haven't used Milani 2-in-1 in, in a while. I mean, mostly because it is too dark for me at the moment, I just can't be bothered to lighten it up too much. But yeah, I'm using this over everything. All of my expensive foundations, all of my favorites. So I just put this kind of amount on my face. And don't get me wrong, still a lot of foundation. But I am putting on a little bit less at the moment. But I am still putting on loads. It's like a medium buildable coverage. It looks dewy, but not wet on the skin. It's just bloody good. And it's like four or five pounds. It's nuts. But yeah, I just like to even everything out with that. So it is like a touch too dark but I will just pop some concealer on in a second to lighten it up. So then something that hasn't changed for a very long time and probably never will, like the day that I find a concealer that I like more than Bye Bye Under Eye, I feel like the world will end when that happens. I know there's so many people that love this, but I also know there's some people that have tried it and gone like, I don't get the hype, but I basically don't blend it out too much. I do tend to prefer to apply it with my fingies, but just because of my nails, I'm just, I can't be bothered. But yeah, I just pat it on. I don't really blend out too much. I just kind of do that, really, and make sure that it's all blended out where it needs to be. I also just like to go onto my lid with it as well, because it is, it reminds me a lot of the P. Louise base. Like, it's got that kind of consistency. So yeah, I do just slap that all over my lid as well. And it's just a dream. It just does everything. It's quite a thick, but almost like oily product, so it might look a little bit kind of oily and intense on your under eyes at first, but to be honest, I find that that works better because especially if you're like, well, especially if you blink, which I'm imagining a lot of you do, then you're gonna have, you know, a bit of texture, some lines on your eyes. And because it is quite a hydrating product, it's not something that dries down super matte or anything, I find it just sits on everything a lot nicer and it just kind of glides over the lines as opposed to really sinking into them. Bloody goods. Like when I put it on, I look alive. I take it off and I, I actually used this the other day, kind of all over my face as well. I was basically sat in here just doing my makeup and the foundation was too far away, it was in the other room. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put this all over my face and it worked really, really well. I just sort of blended it all out. And then with my sponge, I just kind of add a little bit more coverage to my nose. 
And even though it's called Bye Bye Under Eye, like I'm a rebel. I like to I like to do things differently around here. So sometimes I will just cover up any spots with it as well. I feel like it's the best at covering up dry spots because again, obviously it is quite hydrating. So you just pop a bit of that on. It's not going to emphasize any texture or anything. I don't know. I could rant and rave about this stuff so much. It's not the cheapest, but this tube. I mean, I have one tube that lasted me like almost three years. So it lasts a really, really long time. But yeah, I just take my sponge with whatever's kind of left on it and just go into the corners of my nose. And again, because it's hydrating, I can go into the corners of my nose and it doesn't look cakey, it doesn't look dry. So I just kind of fill in the gaps with it really. Ta-da. So then for concealer, I've really been liking these. Um, obviously you guys know I love my Tarte Shape Tape. This one is maybe a touch too dark for me at the moment. It's in the shade Light Medium. And then I've also been loving the Jouer concealer that I tried out fairly recently. But what I'm gonna do today is actually use this concealer from Sleek. I don't love it for like under my eyes and stuff, but I use this a lot to kind of lighten my face. So I'll basically just add a bit more coverage on my jaw. I've been getting a few spots there recently, obviously from wearing masks and stuff, so it just kind of adds a little bit more coverage. And then again, maybe just like a couple of places I want to highlight. These bits here. I always love and I'm like, yeah, I'm using less coverage at the moment. I mean, it's less than I would normally wear, but it's still like enough for 12 faces. But basically what I do is wherever I put, like I covered up a little spot there with that. And I like to just match it on the other side, even if I don't have a spot. So basically, whatever I do to one side, I always do to the other. But yeah, I just kind of use this at the moment, just to lighten my jaw up ever so slightly. Because this foundation's like pretty much like a match to my skin and the rest of my body right now. But I feel like it could just do with lightening up a tiny bit. And this makeup look, by the way, I didn't say at the start of the video, this lasts me all day. Like I've gotten up and you know, maybe finished my makeup by about 10 o'clock and I've been streaming until like three in the morning and it's just been on. The only thing that kind of rubs off a little bit is just like my lipstick and stuff, but that's it. Okay, so that's where I'm kind of at right now. Then for powder, I either tend to use my Laura Mercier powder or my Huda Beauty one. I have this one in front of me right now, so I'm just gonna use this one. But I just take a fluffy brush like this. It's like slightly larger than the kind of brush that I would use for highlighting. And I find the best way to apply powder, because if you're like me and you don't like to apply too much, but you still want everything to be kind of set down and not looking overly shiny, I basically just load up my brush with powder, but I don't just let it sit on top. I make it sort of go into the bristles. And then I always make sure to blend out any creases with my sponge and just go straight in with my powder. So I always start on the outer corner because I don't want too much powder on my inner corner because that's where I have more creasing. So I just lightly set that in place. I'm barely applying any powder, literally just enough to kind of get rid of the shine. Like once the shine's kind of gone, I'm like, okay, I'm good, I'm set. Sometimes I will just very, very rarely take my sponge and take the tiniest amount on there. And I never, ever, ever bake because I feel like it makes my under eyes resemble like a concrete slab, but I just kind of push the powder in there sometimes. And then with that same brush, I just kind of focus on the smaller areas of my face that I maybe want a bit more powder. So I always powder down my nose a bit separately. I always kind of go around my chin a tiny bit. And again, I'm not taking any powder from the actual pot. I'm just kind of swirling my brush around there to pick up any little extra bits. I feel like that's kind of the best way to do full coverage without it looking too cakey is just to not powder it down too much. Cause then it just looks, you know, overly matte and a bit thicker. Whereas when it's kind of just blending in with your skin and moving around a bit, it doesn't look too intense. So then I just like to do the same thing and just lightly tap powder all over the rest of my face. I just tend to find that if you're putting on more makeup, that for me personally, and from what I've just found maybe doing makeup on a few other people, is that if you're gonna put like a whole load of coverage on your face, don't then put a whole load of powder on because it does just look kind of obvious and a bit cakey and a bit thicker. So yeah, if I just lightly tap powder all over my face, it just keeps it in place enough, but it still kind of lets the underneath part move around. So it's not like fully setting every bit of liquid on my face. It's just like setting the top layer of it. So it looks good. It stays on, but my face doesn't feel like it's about to crack open. Oh, and then one super almost controversial thing that I do. <gasps> you won't believe this. I set down my eyelids. I know that everyone is just obsessed with using like a wet base and stuff. And I like using a wet base if I'm doing something kind of a bit more dramatic or whatever. But when I'm just doing an everyday kind of light smoky eye. And then very controversially, cause I know everyone likes to use a wet base. I set down my lids with my powder as well. I just make sure there's not any major creasing on my lid and just set it down. Okay, so then nothing has changed here when it comes to my contour. Can open it. So this is probably the fourth year running that I've been using this pretty much religiously. So it's of course the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Bronzer. Let me know if you guys have any other like contouring bronzing products that are like your favorites. 
because I like something this kind of shade to contour with. It's not too cool tone, it's not gray or anything, but it's definitely not really, really warm. So yeah, let me know your favorite contouring and bronzing products, please, just because, I don't know, I'm happy with using this. I'm happy with having this in my, my routine, but I just never find anything that quite compares to this. Maybe I should just make my own. Maybe I should just make my own. We'll see. Yeah, I love this stuff. I just use a, what do you call it? The Luxe Powder Finish Brush from Zoeva. It's just a kind of smaller blending brush and I can get right in there, but it's not too dense. It's not too fluffy. I can just focus it a little bit more than I would with a bigger fluffy brush. So I've probably applied a little bit too much, but whatever. But yeah, I just like to kind of lightly dust that down the sides of my nose, underneath. Sometimes I do also like to just go in with a eyeshadow brush and just focus it a bit more on my nose if I want to do something a bit more intense, but I, I never really do proper nose contouring. I don't know how some of you guys do it. I am just too lazy. I would love to have a nose that just looks like it was sculpted by a freaking architect, but I would also like to have an extra 10 minutes in bed. But yeah, I basically just put some of this down the sides and then blend it out with my sponge. And again, doing this over the powder as well, I threw my sponge on the floor then, but doing this over the powder, just very, very lightly, I find it also helps to blend it in. Again, make it look a lot more kind of skin-like as opposed to looking very, very powdery. And sometimes I just like to shove some of that in my crease as well, just to save me a bit of time. And then I'll also sometimes just whack that in my crease with a really big fluffy brush, N not to do anything major, it's more so just to kind of, I don't know, just kind of makes it feel better. I sort of cover it up with eyeshadow, so I don't really know why I do this, but I, continue to. So then another product that I have just been using for a really, really long time is of course MAC Give Me Sun, but I've also been using the Doll Beauty bronzer quite a lot recently. It's just called the, oh, Sneaky. So this one's Give Me Sun, this one's Give Me Sun. So apparently I like, I like things that give me sun. But yeah, for bronzer, I tend to take a little bit less than I would for contour because again, like this is fairly sort of neutral to warm, so I don't need too much. But I basically just take the uh, MAC Give Me Sun and tap my bronzer brush in there just to kind of get it loaded up dust the excess off, and then I just warm my cheeks up ever so slightly on top. It's like I don't want to have this all over my face, but I do want to have a slight hint of it at the top of my face. And then I usually tend to take a little bit of that and go to my neck. So now, highlighter. So of course, I got to use my little bae, Milk and Cookies. If you haven't heard of it, it's a pretty cool highlighter. I'm only slightly biased. But actually, before I actually put this on my face, I want to say thanks. Like, I know I keep saying thanks every kind of, every time I kind of talk about this, but this has sold out so many times. Like, Beauty Bay obviously sold out instantly on the first day. And then they got a restock, and they ordered way more units this time, and they sold out even quicker. And then Ofra sold out, like, three times, and I'm just like, okay, you guys really like it. <laughs> thanks very much. I, I don't really know how to, like, express myself, but I'm just still kind of in shock, really. I just cannot believe how many of you have picked it up? How many of you love it? I've had so many messages, like you weren't lying when you said this is the best highlighter ever, and I'm like, thank you, thank you very much. So basically, hi, hello, if you've been living under a rock, this is my collab with Ofra called Milk and Cookies. You have two different highlight shades. This one is milk, this one is cookies. Don't be fooled by how cookies looks, because a lot of people are worried that this is gonna be too dark from them. We've tried to make it as inclusive as possible as like one product can be. So cookies actually on my skin looks like it I'm not very good at swatching. Looks like it would be too dark for me, but if I just show you, it's more so just got a different undertone to milk. It's got like slightly more rose gold undertone, whereas milk is a lot more champagne-y. But yeah, cookies just blends out really, really nicely. If it is too dark for you, it works amazingly as a like blusher or bronzer topper. I'm gonna add some milk on top as well, because my favorite thing to do is actually swirl these together. Just look at it. So yeah, depending on when this video goes up, if it's available at Beauty Bay again, I will link it because they are doing another restock soon. But if you did want to order it before the restock, then Ofra still do have pretty much constant stock of it. That's my highlighter. So now for blusher, I'm going to be going in with the HNB, what do you call it, self-made blusher. I'm also really liking the Laura Mercier ones at the moment, but this one is quite a light colour for me. So I just like to use a tiny bit of that and just blend that in between my bronzer and my highlighter there. And then, like I said, I always go back in with my sponge just to basically press that all into my skin even more. Whew. Come to think of it, this is actually kind of like the makeup look that I actually did for my Ofra shoot. So now for my fake freckles, I'm gonna be using this guy here from Misguided called the Frex Appeal Pen. I still really, really love Freck, but I just find this to be so easy. So I just tend to do around about like five or six dots first, because this one does set a little bit quicker than other freckle pens, so you just kind of have to work in smaller areas. But I just do some bigger dots, 
some smaller ones, and then just press them with my finger. Sometimes I actually do quite big ones because I find it looks a bit more natural. Yeah, I just press that in, and then again, I'll go back over with my sponge in a minute. Can't wait until the summer when I can have real freckles again. I'm definitely not a pro when it comes to doing fake freckles, but I feel like I am getting better and better at it the more I do it. I probably say the best way to do realistic-ish looking freckles, like I'm not saying mine necessarily look overly realistic, but just to kind of stop them from looking really, really intense, like you have just gone and drawn loads of dots on your face. I do just sort of work in layers, sometimes I'll overlap them, and I kind of just try and focus on where I would naturally get freckles, so I don't tend to get them like all the way across my nose, I will just get them more so like on the side. So I only dot a few right across my nose and I just kind of blend the rest out. I then go back over them with a sponge and because there's a tiny little bit of like concealer and foundation left on there, it just kind of covers them up ever so slightly so they're not, you know, super opaque, which makes them look a little bit more real because it's almost like they're just showing through your foundation. So then for brows, depending on the kind of look that I want, I might use the Refi Brow Sculpt or I'll use the Pink Honey Brow Glue. But a lot of the time if I am doing my brows after my base makeup, I will just use my Benefit 24 hour brow setter stuff. So I'll just fluff them up and then kind of bring them across. Let me know if you guys want like a full in-depth brow routine because I can do that because I do do my brows a little bit different now. But this is more so just like a little speed run and how I do my brows. So yeah, I brush them up and then use the side of the brush to kind of slick them down a bit. And then I usually tend to find because obviously I've done my foundation that my brows look a little bit beige. So before that dries, I then go in with Gimme Brow. I'm using the one in the shade four. And yeah, before it dries, I just tint the brow hair quickly just to get rid of any foundation or powder. Then when it comes to filling in my little slugs, I tend to use one of these products most. So I use the Refi Brow Pencil or the Precisely My Brow from Benefits or this guy here, the Brow Blade from Urban Decay. But today, just because it is quite new to me, I am going to be using the Refi Pencil. This pencil has probably one of the skinniest nibs I've ever seen in a brow pencil, which is why I like it so much. So good job, Jess. Yeah, I'm normally just kind of drawing my arch a little bit. Go big or go home. Are we even? Probably not, but we're even enough. There's some big eyebrows. I love it. What else do I do? So then for my eyes, which is probably the main thing that I've changed, like normally I would just do just a bit of brown in my crease and just kind of all over the lids. So I'm still using my Faith palette from Nip and Fab. It is just a sculpted palette. It's just, it's just a good everyday palette. The eyeshadows aren't too intense and too pigmented. They're just something that you can do a nice kind of natural look with. So the main thing that I've kind of changed with my sort of everyday makeup routine is I now do a little wing. Like when have I ever, like I never do wing liner. I never do any kind of wing, but basically all I do is I go in with this shade here, which is just like a cool tone brown. And I'll just roughly run that through my crease and a little bit on my lids. I'll just kind of dust that all over my lid like so, and then focus it mostly in my crease and then flick it out. So this is still pretty much exactly what I would do before with my eyes. Because obviously I haven't had Botox done in a while, I feel like this eyelid is still a little bit kind of up, whereas this one's just dropped a bit and I'm like, what is this crease happening here? Can I just, I think I'm just gonna get some sellotape or something and stick my eyeball up. Then using the same fluffy brush, I go in with this shade here, which honestly kind of looks the same as the other one, but for some reason I do just prefer the other shade. And I'll focus that more so on my lid. And then again, just kind of blend it out. Does it really look that different? Probably not, but I like to do it anyway. And then I'll also take, again, any kind of brush. I literally just grab anything that's basically not dirty or covered in blue eyeshadow or something. So I just take a slightly smaller brush or thinner. I then just like to add some of that to my lower lash line. Another great tip if you have creasing under your eyes, uh, just cover it up with eyeshadow. Just make it look like it's supposed to look like that. So then the one thing that I do differently now is I'll take a darker brown shade. So let's just go in with this one here. And I just kind of dust off the excess. And I basically just draw a little wing, just like that. And then bring that onto my lid. I don't know why I was using that brush. I normally use this tiny little paintbrush, but I just kind of smudge it and blend it out. So it's not anything too harsh. And then I actually just start bringing it across my lash line like that. When do I ever do any kind of liner? It just kind of lifts my eyes up a little bit, like nothing too drastic. And then instead of doing like a really dramatic kind of inner corner flick or whatever, I basically just take a tiny amount of that eyeshadow and I basically just bring it right into the inner corner. So I don't take it any further than the inner corner. I just kind of emphasize it a bit with that. And yeah, I'm just liking doing that at the moment. I just feel like it just does something a little bit different without being too kind of out there. So then for my lashes, my two new favorite mascaras are either the Sky High Mascara from Maybelline or the L'Oreal Telescopic. I think I'm gonna use the Telescopic today because this one is just really good at getting like right at the base of my lashes. But look at this stuff. 
If you haven't, if you haven't seen the hype about this mascara, it's been around for a really, really long time, but it recently kind of went viral on TikTok and it's replaced my lash paradise. That's how into it I am. So I just tend to kind of like blink into it and it just wings all of my lashes out and I can get right into the inner corner as well. I don't have any falsies with it. Because of the liner and everything like that, it just makes my lashes look even thicker. And then I'll also go on my lower lash line. I tend to mostly focus the product on like the outer corner, like that. How sick is that? I've been getting a lot of questions recently about the lash serum that I use. I hate promoting it because it is just so expensive. It's literally like a hundred pounds. And I'm judging myself on that as well, that I spent that much money on just a two mil tube of eyelash stuff. But I will do it again because it's great. Like, it's so great. So I will leave a link to it down below, um, just in case you want to treat yourself and be a little bit bouge. Like, my lashes are naturally quite long. They're not this long. Like, this is the lash serum. I just love this eye look. Hmm. Yes. So then for my lips, I'm gonna be using this guy here from W7. It is the Lip Twister Liner in the shade Very Nude. It's so cheap. It's like $1.99 or something. You can get it in like Home Bargains and B&M and stuff. So I just basically follow my lip line, kind of. Sometimes I go a little bit overboard, but I like to attempt to follow my lip line. So I follow it all across there. And then if I wanna make my lips look a little bit fuller, I'll just go across my cupid's burbit. Like instead of overlining all of my lips, I just tend to overline my cupid's burbit. And then I'll just kind of fill all that in with my lip liner just roughly. Like this, and I like that on its own to be honest. I wear it on its own all the time. What I am gonna use, I of course have my Nude Embrace lipstick, which I love so much and I do actually tend to use most days. But I also have this lipstick here from Doll Beauty called Come To Mama, which I like. But I also have this one called FOMO, which is a lot lighter, like that. So I'm just gonna use a bit of that. Just kind of lighten up the middle of my lips. Mmm, that is what I like. I just like basically upgraded foundation lips. And then you won't believe this. I've been wearing a gloss recently. So I've been using the NYX Lip Lingerie in the shade Butter. I just take a tiny bit just to kind of keep it a little bit hydrated. Like I don't use much and I usually tap it off a tiny bit, but I just feel like it makes it look a little bit more healthy, a little bit more just like, <sniffs> yep, that's the technical term. Just a little bit of setting spray, Urban Decay All Nighter. By a little bit, I mean I make my face damp. Damp, and then I just wait, and then my face won't move. So I just like to drown myself in it, and then by the time I'm all dried down, we're good to go. Okay, I'm now gonna go and do my hair, and I'll see you guys in a minute. Oof. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so this is the finished look. I just did a little something to my hair. People have been asking about how I get my hair like this. I literally just like twist a straightener around and make some curls. Like if you want a tutorial, I can do one, but it is very, very easy. I don't know, let me know. But yeah, this is the finished look. I love it. I just feel like it's it's still very kind of similar to my usual everyday makeup look, but I feel like with the eyeliner and stuff like that, I don't know, just really into it. As always, I will of course leave links to everything down below as well as Milk and cookies, so like I said, if you guys do wanna check it out, you can use the code Steph Toms, it will get you 20% off. I think I'm now gonna go and stream some Minecraft over on Twitch. Um, so if you haven't followed me there, again, links will be down below. I just got my Twitch partner, Madness. So yeah, I'm gonna go stream now. If you wanna hang out with me like outside of YouTube, then I'm streaming like most days at the moment. So feel free to head on over down below. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload every Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays and yeah. That's about it. Let me know what your everyday makeup routine is, like your favorite products, the kind of look you go for. Do you tend to do something kind of boring like me that's like browns, neutrals, slightly smoky eye? Or are you cool as hell and you do like a graphic liner or like a bright colored eye makeup look every single day or like a bright lipstick as like your staple look? Let me know. Just, yeah, let me know what your kind of everyday makeup look consists of. Thank you, I'm curious. Anyway, I'm now gonna go and punch some trees and like kill some creepers and just build things out of little pixelated blocks. So apart from that, that is it from me. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.